How are we ensuring that we can harness AI to help us and not let it replace us? You had three ways in which you could sell. Uh, you could lower your price, you could take more risk, or you could leverage your relationships. There is so much information that people uh, ignore when they're going into calls, and therefore there's so much money that they're leaving on the table. We're gonna very quickly get to a place where you're telling me your problems, you're telling me your challenges, and then I can customize a solution for you that fits your needs. So I'm obsessed with AI tools that are going to enhance my business, save me time. I speak to a lot of app developers, and I'm really excited to bring Mike Wynn onto the show today. He's the founder and CEO of Forge. Mike, what's up? How you doing, man? It's an honor to be on the show. Thanks so much for having me. Honor is all mine. When you were kind of walking me through your software, I was blown away. And it's, it's very forward thinking, I think. And basically what Mike's software does is it combines the power of AI, the internet, and your personal calendar. Like if you're like me and you're getting on a lot of calls, sometimes it's hard to know who you're talking to, doing your research, it takes a lot of time, but Forge solves this problem. Why don't, why don't you give me a little bit of breakdown, Mike, into how you came up with this idea? Yeah, uh, and, and, and thanks for asking. Look, I, I started uh, my sales career uh, in the engineering construction industry. It's a very relationship-driven industry. Uh, you know, they sell a commodity service and you had, you had three ways in which you could sell. Uh, you could lower your price, you could take more risk, or you could leverage your relationships to the hilt. And nobody wanted to lower their prices or take on more risk. So I had to figure out how to build relationships. I was new to sales. I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know anybody in this huge industry. And my boss was like, hey, go build relationships. Now, luckily, he was a master at this. He's the kind of guy who sends 150 birthday cards a year. He knows everybody's sports team, stuff like that. So he got me in the right mindset, which was start talking to people like they're people. Make them be, feel seen as people. Right. And then they'll start trusting you more. But then my question was like, well, where's the tool that can help me? Right. Because this is in the 2010s. There's, you know, all kinds of stuff out there. I've got a CRM platform. None of this actually helps me do this. So that's where the idea started was I had a need and I was I was a junior sales guy. Uh, I, ha I had I had this massive gap in my uh, quotas I had to fill. So that was the starting point. And then as technology improved, I said, All right, we actually got to build this thing. we got to figure out what it is and we got to build it. So. What we're able to do now is, is we've built a relationship-focused calendar, as you mentioned, also a contact manager on steroids, and will soon be a CRM plugin as well. And it combines AI and behavioral science to make prospects feel seen as people, not paychecks, which builds trust and revenue faster. If you've been in sales for any amount of time and selling anything worth the value, I don't mean like selling toasters and TV sets, but if you're selling anything where you're going to have a relationship with your client, your prospect, or you just need to break through the noise and stand out, you're going to need to demonstrate this to people. And normally that's been a huge challenge. It's There's a lot of things to manage. There's a lot of knowledge to gain. There's details to learn. There's bandwidth that you need to do meeting prep. That That's hard to do. So automation and AI are critical because you can actually cut down all the time it takes to do that while storing information, while searching for things on the web that are going to help you in your pitch to your, to your client and customer. So this is why the, this is why this software to me was really exciting because if you're in sales, if you're running a sales organization, the big thing is pick up the damn phone, call as many people as quickly as you can. And if you're getting on the phone and you already know where they went to school, what kind of business they run, where do they live? You could start to customize your experience. You could connect with them more quickly. What might've taken you 40 minutes before can now you can do it five because you get right to the point. Are you a dog person or a cat person? Right. A hundred percent. That, that, is, that is absolutely it. There is so much information that people uh, ignore when they're going into calls. And therefore, there's so much money that they're leaving on the table. Because people, your clients, they want to be treated like people. They don't want to be treated as though they're just a commission check to you. Uh, you know, when, when you're going into, into a call, it makes such a big difference if you can go in there having done the most basic of research, right? to say, oh, I know, I know what school you went to. I lived in the same town. Or I see that, you know, you were also in the Navy. I was in the Navy, right? So that, that, those are great intros. And you should always be looking for those commonalities, those, those things that say, hey, we're part of the same tribe, you and I, right? We 100%, actually, especially if you're able to get this data, get the information, put it right into your CRM, then you can start nurturing, setting up email sequences, all sorts of cool things. I guess my big question here, Mike, is how does AI, how does AI help facilitate this process? Yeah, absolutely. So what we did is we said, okay, everyone's got a calendar. 
right? If you're busy, you're on a calendar. Leads are coming in, you're setting up invites. How can we take advantage of this information? So the first thing that we do is we take the email address that we find in the calendar invite, and then we run a uh, customized uh, series of Google searches. We run it through our own in-house NLP, and we find, sorry, NLP is a natural language processing system. And we find the LinkedIn URL or the, uh, the website, right, the personal website of the person that you're about to meet with. This all happens automatically, by the way, right? So this, all this information is imported. We, we can find out everything about you. And then we use uh, GPT 3.5, right, the open AI, AI uh, system. And we have that summarized, all this information into a, a, a tasty nugget that you can, you can eat in like five to 10 seconds, right? And the amount of things that you can learn in that five to 10 seconds is incredible. Uh, like, for example, last week I was talking to a prospect and it flagged right down there, speaks Turkish. Like, what? I would never expect this. This woman just lives in Pennsylvania. Why would she be speaking wow. Turkish? Pull the thread on that. I'm like, oh, interesting. Okay. She was in the Turkish Students Association at Georgetown University. What does that tell me, right? Probably got a mom who's Turkish. For, soon enough, I'm like, hey, 30 seconds later, I'm on Google saying, uh, how do I say hello in Turkish? Right. And that's my that's my outreach email now. I'm talking to her in my you know, crude Turkish, but she appreciates that effort that I put in because now I'm standing out against everybody else. I'm not going in there with my my cold pitch, which is, you know, just hoping hoping that something sticks against the wall. I'm going in there saying, I see you as a person. I recognize you as a person because my AI system actually went and did all this work to flag what was important to you for me. And when it, again, when it comes to sales, it's it's a numbers game. And mm -hmm. the more sales calls you can make, the more sales you're going to close. And even if it's only saving you five minutes of research times 40, all of a sudden you're getting crazy return. This is when, so you told, when you told me you're approaching some big, big, big CRMs and big sales platforms, I'm like, it's a perfect sense. It's a match made in heaven. I don't want to spoil it for y'all. Cause I don't know if it's public info to put it out there. Maybe it is. Tell me who are you trying to court? Oh, let's just, let's just keep that under wraps. But, um, I'm being very lucky in, in, in my career to know a lot of, a lot of senior people are at a lot of senior companies in Silicon Valley. I spent a lot of time out uh, in that area, and uh, I don't. I don't want to spoil the surprise. Okay, fair, fair. It's a big deal. When he started, when I started getting hints of the names of companies that that they're looking at incorporating this type of technology, let's just say it's going to revolutionize the way that sales works. Um, so why don't you kind of walk me through this process? It, listen, y'all, if you're not watching on YouTube, and put a link below. We're going to walk through this. You audio listeners, you're still going to get a great experience, but. To see it is believe it, Mike. So why don't you kind of walk us through how does this look? When I open up the app on my phone, what is what am I what can I expect? Yeah, yeah. Once you once you sync your work calendar, uh, that's that's when the magic really starts. So what I'm what I'm showing you on the screen right now is uh, just my calendar view. This is just my app on my phone. This is me on a on a you know on a you know, on a regular work day. And so what we're looking at here, Mark, it's just my calendar. Here we are, you and I talking. Right now, and there's your picture. First off, right, it's it's found your name, your email address, converted that to a name, and said, "Oh, this is a picture of Mark." So, right at right at a glance in my daily calendar, as you can see, right, I can see everybody that I'm going to be meeting with, and and spot those names right away because they're pictures now. Which, right? by the way, I'm a face person. I recognize people by face, so that just in and of itself is big. Yeah, exactly. And if I'm meeting you at a conference or something like that, or I'm meeting you for the first time, I did this on Monday with somebody. I was meeting for the first time. I didn't know what they looked like. But I was just able to touch that button right there, and their profile picture came right up. And I was like, ah, that's the guy I'm meeting. He's right over there. So as you, as you look at the screen, all my meeting information is here, uh, You know what the meeting is called, date, time. There's a, there's a button to uh, join the meeting via video conference uh, if you need it, or driving directions. It links to Google Maps as well. I've got your role, title, email, LinkedIn, uh, hot buttons right here. And down here, this is what I'm talking about with the summaries, right? Your entire LinkedIn profile has been summarized down to this, uh, this little nugget right here that um, easily tells me all the cool things about you that I can probably find some overlap with. It, it's, not, it's not what people normally write in their bios, right? Like, oh, I'm a thought leader and I'm, a, you know, I'm, I'm an expert at this, that, and the other things, right? All that fluff, right? Instead, it's like, no, Mark, he's in Florida, right? He worked for uh, State Farm. He went to uh, Florida Atlantic University, right? It's all there so that I can at a glance with five to 10 seconds worth of work, have something to start talking to you about, right? I'm starting Which, to- By the way, it's really hard to get people to include that information when they're scheduling on the calendar. We want to make it frictionless. So yeah. it, now you don't even need to ask for you know your bio and your information. It's all 
registered automatically. What else does it tell you about me, by the way? Does it tell you that I'm just an amazing human being? What else does it say? Well, I mean, that's, that comes through loud and clear. Uh, I, think, I think the most interesting things is it, is it tends to pick up like languages that you speak, uh, places that you visited that may be off the beaten track, uh, you know, real great conversation starters that you as, a, as, as the salesperson can, can then, you know, link into, right? You can, you can just jump straight into that conversation. Now, the, that's, that's, that's one part of our AI is where we've got uh, all that research done for you ahead of time. And we are building out uh, a feature right now, which goes beyond this. We're doing uh, beyond LinkedIn, we call it, where we actually go scrape the broader web. Uh, and uh, our early results of that are fantastic. You learn so much about people. Um, for, for example, in, in one of our test cases, uh, we found a potential uh, client uh, and learned that him and his wife had donated a ton of money to a children's hospital. It's not on his LinkedIn profile, but it is out there written somewhere else. It was on uh, Forbes, actually. And just there, you're like, oh, OK, very interesting. He's donating money to a hospital. Why? Oh, his wife had childhood asthma. Oh, and his wife is from Vietnam. Right away, I can start talking to him about like, uh, things like that because maybe I had a childhood illness, right? Maybe I know what that's like to be an immigrant like his wife is, right? I'm, I'm building those, those overlaps, those social connections as a human being, not just as someone who's going to be coming into a call and being like, here are four reasons why you need to buy my product. I mean, like, mm. who, is, who is this guy just throwing stuff at me, right? Instead, I'm eliciting a conversation and building a human relationship. That we're only in the research step right now. Now, there are three phases to this research, listen, and recall. Our listen uh, screen does something uh, cool as well, right? It coaches you in active listening, which is the most powerful relationship building technique known to science. When you're going into, into meetings, we, I've been guilty of this so many times in the past. I'm just waiting for an opportunity to talk, right? The other person is saying their thing, right? I'm just like, but I want to talk now. I want to talk now. If you can change your mindset, right, to think about how do I follow up from what this person is telling me? If I'm paying attention to what they're saying, right, and then I can follow up with something intelligent that shows that I was listening and get them talking more, we're going to very quickly get to a place where you're telling me your problems. You're telling me your challenges. And then I can customize a solution for you that fits your needs, right? So I'm not just throwing at the wall and hoping something sticks, whatever my solution is. I'm like, oh, actually, I heard he has a problem here and there. I can actually customize something that fits that, right? That's what we're I, I to have. Get. I just want to point out that you're, you're 100% right on the less you speak, the more you sell. I learned that from Chris Doe. I'm using this app called Avoma.ai. It's like a Zoom assistant. And at the end, it will tell you what percentage you're speaking. And if I'm in a, if I'm in a sales call and I see that I'm speaking like 60 or 65%, I'm like, oh, well, I screwed that up. Mm. You know, so I, I agree with you. Active listening that Dale Carnegie wrote about this and how to win friends and influence people. So this is just like that on steroids. Dale Carnegie is a huge influence on what we did here and, and how we built this because those lessons are timeless. They're what, like 90 years old, just in that book. And there's a whole bunch of other uh, examples out there. There's academic research. Uh, that you can uh, that, that we've incorporated into this. Uh, let, let, let me let me give you an example. This is a different a different uh, use case, but it'll get the point across. Mark, do you know what the number one predictor of success in speed dating is? You have three minutes with somebody else to impress them. Who gets the most second dates? Can you guess? Well, I I, I know the answer. I'm not. I you know I would say six pack. I would say six figures, but I know it's the it's person not. that listens the best. It's the person who asks the most follow-up questions, gets the most second dates. It's got nothing mm -hmm. to do with height, weight, hair, clothing, anything. It, it, Tell that it, to Andrew Tate. Andrew Tate will have beef <laughs> with you, but that's okay. <laughs> there, look, my younger self could have used that lesson, uh, lesson too. Uh, <laughs> so, so look, and, and the way we incorporate AI here, uh, you know, is, you know, into, like, into our app and how you can see it is it's, it'll give you questions. You can immediately log quick answers here, right? So, you know, like, for example, I, I know you live in Pompano Beach, right? You know, and I can just save that immediately. And what it does is records that forever. And it's going to ask me a better follow up question. Like, oh, Mark, are you, are you originally from Pompano Beach? Mm. I can ask I've you. I've been in South Florida my whole life. Sure. Right. So then I have like a, a series of yes, no questions that are dynamically updated by AI going forward. Right. But then on our recall screen, then all those details, and you can see some other details that we've I've learned about you in the past here are all captured so that I never forget this. And then what you also see is related to those terms that the AI has figured out. Pompano Beach, it knows, oh, that's a city, right? It's a city in Florida. 
And then it's gone and found news about Pompano Beach in Florida. So I'm up to date with what's going on in your neighborhood, mm. right? Or any of these, any, anything else, Florida Atlantic University or the state of Florida in general, right? I've got all of that in there. And so, so it hear, almost turns into like a sales coach. It's like an AI sales coach that helps you ask better questions. Well, well look, a, a big user base for us are junior salespeople who are trying to learn this for the first time, like I was several years ago, just being like, what do I even do here? Like, how do, how do how, like, I can take people to dinner, but what, do I hope the magic just happens, right? I can take people to sports games, or I just hope that I'm saying the right thing. It's like, there's a science beneath all of this. And when you combine AI and behavioral science together, the results are super powerful. Super I assume powerful. there's a vision to, and maybe this is already in a place, but there's probably a vision to say, what percentage you're closing as well. So it can monitor, okay, sold this, didn't sell that, follow up. And then you can use all that data together to see, well, how many, how many questions did you ask? How many follow-up questions did you ask? What, how did that impact close ratio? Yeah, yeah, especially, especially with our forthcoming CRM plugin, we're gonna start tracking that data, start tracking meetings you're having in the calendars and start building scores, uh, color-coded scores that help you understand how that relationship is progressing compared to the database, right? Compared to everybody else in the database. So another use of AI to, to look at uh, everybody uh, in the system and say, who is most likely to close based on these other signals we're getting? The things they know about others, the times they're meeting, the messaging that they're having. How does that lead to higher higher scores? And therefore, we can start building a leading indicator of pipeline closing, right? We can say, if this relationship is strong now, it's more likely to close in the future. And if it's cold, well, now we can start suggesting things that you might want to do and give you the means to go do it because we can find news outreach articles, right? So like I said, we're finding news out about Pompano, Florida, Atlantic University, Florida, right? Anything else that goes on. We, we were talking about, you know, how awesome it is to live in Florida, uh, like 95% of the year, and then you get a couple of hurricane days, right? You can guarantee that the next time there's a hurricane threatening Florida, I'm going to be the first person to tell you about it, Mark. Right, because I maybe you were telling me about this. It'll actually prompt you something's happening in Florida. Yeah. Follow up with your clients there or your prospects. Yeah. I'll give you another example. Just a couple of weeks ago, a friend of mine from India moved to Canada a couple of years ago, uh, and he's a, he's a Sikh, right? And as you may have heard, uh, a Sikh leader in Canada was possibly assassinated by the Indian government. So knowing that, that what I knew about him just from his resume, if not nothing, if, if nothing else, right? My the app Forge figured all that out, found the latest news, and gave me something to send to him and say, hey. Did you see this? This is this just happened in your community. This is this is tragic. And immediately he wrote back, he's like, this is the first time hearing about this. I'm like, this is this wow. is happening to your community, the Sikh community in Canada. And wow. I'm the first person to tell you about that. Now, what that, that that's just not me. The point of that is not for me to kind of be like, hey, aren't I smart? I've, I'm on top of the news. It's how does this now evolve into an organic, natural touch point that can then change into something else? And so sure enough, we have a back and forth, a conversation. I ask him how his uh, you know, plans are to launch his own consulting business. He says he's getting stuck. I'm like, hey, I know a resource. I'm sending him a, a link to a consulting service uh, that I know that has a whole bunch of uh, great content about how to get started. And so I'm helping. The other thing that I could see this going to, and, and maybe we're not here yet, but is using all this data for, again, quick follow-up. So you don't necessarily have to pick up the phone and text him. A, heard about this assassination, hope you're okay, hope. But it could do that either A, automatically, or B, maybe you even have an AI sales assistant that's trying to warm people up, pepper them up, answer, you know, in the DMs. I, I know people are like, but Mark, it's all about human, human connection. But honestly, I'm interested in scaling. I want to make some damn money. And if I can scale up and instead of hiring a whole sales team, I have one AI assistant that's making all these preliminary qualifying sales messages just so I can get on the phone with the right people. Like that seems like a huge win to me. I don't know. There, there are definitely a lot of ways uh, that you can go with the human connections are important, but also reducing the amount of work it takes to build those connections. Right. Like, you know, once you, once you have the, the means to communicate and you know some commonalities that you have with somebody else, suddenly you can start doing cold outreach very easily. Right? Like, Hey, uh, you know, I spent a lot of time living in Key West down there in Florida, right? Here, here's, here's a natural intro point. And we can start automating, uh, automating some of that so that you don't have to spend time crafting those messages and you can just hit send. Yeah. 
especially if it's starting to collect all that data and it knows the percentage chance that you're going to close based on the previous qualifying questions and conversations. And then you can just start to, again, it's all about using your time wisely to get on the most phone calls that are going to close. Right. Right. And especially if you put this out into a big organization that's using a large CRM with thousands of employees that are calling hundreds of thousands of people, all of a sudden you could start to have like your, your close ratios are going to dramatically increase. We, we, we are just at the beginning of a massive revolution, right? I don't need to sell you on this. And I'm sure your listeners are, are all over this too, right? Like we don't know where all of this could go, but the use cases that are appearing already and the ability of the technology to, to support these use cases is phenomenal. Uh, look, I mean, just talking about, um, you know, AI sales assistance, there's a company called Voxia uh, that just launched a, a sales assistant that starts making outbound phone calls with voice, right? It's a chatbot mm. with voice, and it is very hard to tell that it is an AI. And in their examples that they've posted, this for this company has posted, you can tell that the customer has no idea they're talking to a robot, right? They're just having a happy conversation about shoes. And uh, OpenAI themselves just last week uh, announced that they are uh, are launching a, a voice version of ChatGPT uh, for some of their you know premium customers. Which will then roll out to everybody else. So it's unbelievable. I actually had a podcast on this show that was entirely AI generated, both from the script to the text to the title to all the audio that was spoken. It's and that was like eight months ago. So it's and it's way better now. Oh, it's yeah, it's only getting better. It's only getting better all the time. And I think that's that's a challenge to to all of us, right? Especially all of us in sales, is how are we ensuring that we can harness AI to help us and not let it replace us, right? And I think to your point, that's why this program Forge is very interesting to me because it's about developing the relationships and using the tool to develop the relationships. So we, we talked about the research, we talked about the, the discussion and the act of listening. Yeah. What's the third component? So the third component is the recall. So that is basically three things, right? Prepping you for the next meeting. I, I, I have yet to close anybody on the first meeting. I've never been able to do it in my in my life, right? Because some, when you're selling expensive things, I used to sell nine figure projects, right? When I was in the engineering construction industry, you're not going to close anyone on the first sale or on the first meeting. What you need to do is be prepared for the second meeting and the third and the fourth, right? So if you don't have a system that is helping you capture things that you learn and you're forgetting things that people are telling you, you're not going to look very cool by the time you get to your third and fourth meeting and you can't remember the sports teams that people are following or the names of their spouses or kids that they've mentioned yep. several times, right? You're just going to lose. So you need a tool that is going to help you recall these things. So we, we push notifications to our users five minutes before a meeting starts says, hey, don't forget these key things you learned, right? Don't walk into this meeting unarmed. Have an icebreaker. We give you that too, right? Have all this information at your fingertips so that you can crush this meeting and then get the next one. And that is another form of productivity, right? Like you mentioned, like sales can be a numbers game. Absolutely, right? It's, it's not just a matter of like, you know, trying to hit a percentage, you know, and then increasing the number of calls that you're doing to get, you know, to have that percentage apply to more and more calls and more deals. It's also about converting more of those calls, right? Mm. Making sure that you can get more follow-up in every call that you have. And this is, this is a tool that is, um, is primed, geared just to do that. When, especially when you can't afford to lose a sale, you can't afford to lose a contact because it took you a long time to get it. I love it. I love, I love, honestly, I love everything about it. I like, I, you know, I talk to probably a dozen AI app developers every month. This is to me, one of the most practical plug and play that, that I've seen. You can get it at forgeyournetwork.com, forgeyournetwork.com. And we've been speaking to Mr. Mike Wynn, the future Elon of the AI calendar sales space. Mike, any closing thoughts here? Uh, look, I really appreciate the time, Mark. And, uh, you know, this there, there is an opportunity that, that I would love your listeners to take advantage of, which is to utilize the power of automation and AI to make you a better human being. That is something I can agree with. Mike Wynn, thank you for joining the show today. Thank you, Mark. It's been a privilege.